Billions of years ago, we know Mars had liquid water like Earth. This has been proven over and over again, whether that be the fact we see signs of water erosion in ancient rivers, or that rovers have discovered minerals on the surface that only form in the presence of water. Somewhere around 4 billion years ago, Mars most likely had large bodies of water, and maybe even oceans concentrated in the low elevation northern hemisphere, and lakes in the south. Whether or not this was an environment for life is a topic for another video. But Mars having water at all causes a problem. Mars today is outside the habitable zone, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist. It should be too cold. Of course, there are plenty of ways to make a planet warm enough for water, like a greenhouse effect caused by a dense atmosphere. But 3-4 to four billion years ago, the sun was even colder than it is today, meaning Mars was even further outside the habitable zone and even colder. So, for liquid water to exist here at all, something must have happened to Mars's climate to become warm enough. We don't really know what that was, and some believe it was simply just an unexplained global warming event. But that theory isn't very satisfying, which has led to others. Weird things happening in Mars's environment is nothing new. We already know this planet experiences drastic changes in axial tilt every 100,000 years, leading to it basically falling over on its side every once in a while, like Uranus is today, then coming back up to spin nearly straight. Currently, Mars's axial tilt, which causes the seasons, is about 25 degrees, similar to Earth, but it can get as high as 70 degrees. This causes very drastic seasons that, because of Mars's longer year, last 6 months each. It can also get as low as 0 degrees, which means sometimes Mars has no seasons at all. All of this has drastic effects on Mars itself, most notably its atmosphere and ice content. Depending on how drastic Mars's tilt is, its atmospheric pressure changes, and the amount of ice on its surface increases or decreases. 3.6 billion years ago, Mars's atmosphere must have been much denser than it is today. The atmospheric pressure it has today is not enough to support liquid water, so the only way it had oceans at all was it must have had a denser atmosphere. It also probably had active volcanoes around that time, and the atmosphere's composition was probably mostly carbon dioxide like it is today. So, 3.6 billion years ago, Mars had large amounts of both ice and liquid water, and a dense atmosphere. However, this was almost certainly not an Earth-like environment. These oceans at this time may have not been in the form Earths are. But much like it is today, Mars's axial tilt was moving all over the place on a 100,000 year cycle. That's a recipe for some really interesting things to happen. In fact, in my opinion, this is probably the most interesting period in Mars's history. Because, according to a recent study, this was around the time where Mars's atmosphere collapsed, the polar ice caps melted rapidly, and gigantic ice-covered seas formed with no need for a greenhouse effect at all. This new theory not only removes the need for an unexplained warming event, but also allows Mars to have liquid water despite cold temperatures. And it's pretty interesting all on its own. At this time, Mars was on the border between the Noachian period of its history, potentially when it was experiencing a large amount of asteroid impacts, and the Hesperian period, where it might have had large-scale volcanic activity and the formation of huge valleys. So, Mars as it was 3.6 billion years ago was a volcanically active place with a dense atmosphere, though likely very cold, which should limit the existence of liquid water. The 100,000-year axial tilt cycle was probably still going on, which means something important for its atmosphere. When Mars's axial tilt was high, the poles received a lot of light, and the equator received almost none. So, during this time, ices on the poles were released into the air as carbon dioxide gas. Some of this gas remained in the atmosphere while some of it drifted over to the equator, where it was absorbed by the Martian regolith. When Mars's axial tilt was low, around 0 degrees, the poles received pretty much no light ever, while the equator was the hottest. So, we have a situation where the atmosphere is being deposited onto regolith, which is then being heated up by the sun. This heat causes the regolith to then release those gases, or it eventually wanders back over to the poles and freezes, turning back into ice. This is when the atmosphere collapsed. Keep in mind that during all of this, the poles never really became hot enough for its water ice to melt, just the CO2 ice. So, there's a ton of free carbon dioxide just waiting to return to the poles when the axial tilt lowers again. And this is exactly what happened, according to the study I'll link in the description. Massive amounts of carbon dioxide returned to the poles, where it was cold enough that it froze once more. Now we have a layer of CO2 deposits about half a mile thick on top of the water ice layer, which itself is about two and a half miles thick, on both polar ice caps. And because Mars is in a period of low axial tilt, they both receive almost no light at the same time. The atmospheric pressure was still high enough to support liquid water, just a lot of its carbon dioxide was trapped as ice on the poles. This is where the volcanic activity comes in. Mars at this time had a lot more internal heat than it does today. 
The heat from its core usually just slowly radiates out on the surface and into space, sometimes fueling volcanoes. But on the poles, there's half a mile of dry ice in the way of that heat. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and does a very good job at reflecting heat. So the poles, over long periods of time, are just sitting there, warming up, under a sheet of CO2 that isn't letting the heat escape. That then causes the water of the polar ice caps to melt, so it starts flowing. However, as it seeps through the dry ice layer, it just freezes again, because again, the poles are very cold around this time. So all that liquid water becomes trapped, CO2 ice on the top, permafrost all around. The only place for it to go is underground. So, the result is massive, thousand-kilometer-long rivers draining out of the poles and across Mars, covered by layers of ice on top. The water flows until it reaches warmer areas, where it pools and collects in massive lakes and seas. Because it's still very cold, layers of ice form on top of these seas, leading to gigantic ice-covered lakes across the surface of Mars. The Argyre Basin has one of the biggest of these potential lakes, nearly the size of the Mediterranean Sea. So, Mars, 3.6 billion years ago, probably wasn't an ocean planet like it's sometimes portrayed as. It was an ice planet, with massive sheets of water and CO2 ice covering immensely long rivers and giant seas. As the axial tilt continues changing, these rivers and seas wax and wane depending on how tilted Mars is. This is not only an incredibly interesting environment, but it also explains several things. I should clarify here that we don't know this happened for certain. However, there is strong evidence for it. First off, this theory removes the need for an unspecified global warming event on Mars. Without all this happening, for liquid water to exist on Mars, it would need an exceptionally warm atmosphere. There's no real explanation for how that atmosphere formed or how it retained so much heat. With ice-covered rivers and seas, you don't need global warming at all. An extremely cold Mars will still host all of that, and will produce the same evidence of water we see today. Second, a big requirement for this theory to be true is the aforementioned massive rivers. If this theory is true, and Mars's atmosphere fell on the poles and melted them, then these rivers must exist. They would have had to form around 3.6 billion years ago. And we see evidence of this. Mars has a series of massive valleys surrounding the Argyre Basin. Ares, Morava, Ladon, and Uzboi Vallis flowing to the north, and Palacopas, Doanus, Zigai, and Sirius Vallis from the south. They all connect to the Argyre Basin, which was, as I mentioned, the site of the potential Mediterranean Sea-sized ice-covered lake. These valleys were almost certainly formed by water, and wouldn't you know it, they all probably formed around 3.6 billion years ago. And if they were filled with water, they would drain directly into the Argyre Basin. This is the most likely evidence of the ancient rivers necessary for this theory to work. In fact, in this case, so much water would have been dumped into Argyre that would have actually overflowed, emptying excess water into surrounding lakes. Rivers that didn't reach Argyre would drain into the low-lying plains in the northern hemisphere, explaining the evidence of water erosion there as well. So, while not confirmed yet, there is strong evidence this is what happened on Mars. However, more testing is still needed. There's still a chance that other theories could explain this. For example, if we discover that there was a global warming on Mars 3.6 billion years ago, then this theory becomes completely unnecessary. Also, if this is true, then once water reached the equator, it finally became warm enough to evaporate. Then, just like the CO2, some of the water vapor made its way back to the poles, completing the Martian water cycle. However, if all of this happened, it didn't last long, because Mars's atmosphere was being stripped away by the sun. Every cycle, there will be less and less CO2 to make it to the poles, meaning there will be less heat trapped. That results in less water being melted, smaller rivers, and smaller lakes. So this entire cycle of the atmosphere collapsing onto the poles, resulting in meltwater rivers thousands of miles long, covered in ice sheets, draining into even larger ice-covered seas, probably only lasted about 100 million years before it stopped entirely. After that, Mars's atmosphere just became too thin to support liquid water at all, leading to the rivers and seas drying up entirely. So, all the water on the pulse today is just the stuff that survived all of it. Unfortunately, Mars's lack of both a magnetic field and a way to replenish its atmosphere meant it was doomed to lose it. Mars's axial tilt still changes drastically today, and the atmosphere still collapses. Every 100,000 years, when Mars's tilt is low, large amounts of CO2 are still deposited onto the poles to this day. That's also another very strong piece of evidence for this theory. It's still happening in modern times, just to a way lesser extent. But the CO2 deposits are nowhere near large enough to melt the polar ice caps, and even if they were, the liquid water wouldn't last long, as it would boil away in Mars's thin atmosphere. But there is a chance for this to start up again.
I talk about this more in my video called The Far Future of Mars, which I recommend watching. But essentially, once the sun begins heating up, more carbon dioxide still trapped in rocks will be released back into Mars' atmosphere, and if this happens quickly enough to outpace the radiation stripping the atmosphere away, then there is a very small but non-zero chance that Mars both heats up enough and gets the required pressure to support liquid water once again. Then, just like before, the poles will begin to melt, and water would once again flow down those ancient rivers one last time, before the sun becomes too hot and the last of the Martian atmosphere and water content is blasted away. With that, the ancient Mars might have not been what we expected at all. Instead of an Earth-like planet with shallow, warm oceans, it was an ice world going through drastic changes in axial tilt over thousands of years. Depending on how drastic the tilt was, larger parts of the atmosphere collapsed onto the poles, melting the polar ice caps without the need for global warming. The meltwater then carved rivers across the Martian surface, and though they were covered in ice, not exposed to the air at all. Eventually, the rivers drained into massive seas, like the Argyre Basin or the Northern Hemisphere. The size of these bodies of water varied dramatically depending on the tilt of the Martian axis. Then, as Mars slowly died, the cycle became weaker and weaker until, after about 100 million years, it stopped entirely. Today, the Martian atmosphere collapse cycle is still present, but much weaker and less important. This theory eliminates the need for an unexplained global warming event on Mars, and allows the planet to have liquid water despite its extremely cold temperatures at the time, which were even colder than present day. It'll still be a while before the theory can be confirmed, but there is direct evidence for it across the planet. The ancient solar system is filled with strange events like this. Like the highly unconfirmed potential of Earth having rings and additional moons 400 million years ago, which I made a full video about. If you're interested in how the solar system changes through deep time, I have a few videos going over the far future of various planets, and I'm considering doing videos about their ancient past as well. But for now, only time will tell if this theory is actually correct, and whether or not Mars was an ocean planet like Earth 3.6 billion years ago, or a cold ice planet unlike any environment Earth has ever had. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.